in the year 2101, war was beginning. What happened? Someone set up us the bug. We get signal. What? Main screen turn on. It's you. How are you gentlemen? All your base are belong to us. You are on the way to destruction. What you say? You have no chance to survive make your time. Ha ha ha. Hey guys, Gino here, coming at you. It's 12.04 a.m. on uh, September 6, 2018. And I just wanted to talk about a place that was like really, really special to me. And a, a lot of people uh, in Connecticut, and that's the old Manchester Parkade. Um, the old one, not the new one, the old one. Um that was on Broad Street in Manchester, Connecticut. Um, by the time I got to know that place, it was already long dead. Um, for, for those of you who don't know, um, there's going to be pictures uh, that I took myself um, that are going to be in the slideshow for this. So I'm, I'm going to put something together, hopefully. Um, so the Manchester Parkade was a uh, shopping center uh, on, on Broad Street in uh, Manchester, Connecticut. And uh, the stores that were there were uh, Stop and Shop. It was actually a super Stop and Shop, one of the uh, big so uh, Stop and Shops, not like a regular one. Uh, back when uh, they used to call everything like Super or Big, like uh, Kmart used to do that too. Like they had Super Kmart and uh, Big Kmart and... Super Center and all this stuff. Now everything's just called like Walmart, Kmart, and everything else because huge stores like that have now just become the norm. Um, so, in this plaza, as I said before, was Stop and Shop. Uh, there was also a Bradley's. Um, if you guys remember the Bradley's department store, it was a great store. Um, and I'll get into a little bit about Bradley's in a bit. Um, then there were like these, uh, then it was like the strip mall with like Joanne Fabrics, uh, Hobby Time, Card Gallery. Um, I believe there was even a nightclub there called David's at one point. Uh, there was a Marshall's, there was a health center. Um, it was really a vibrant, alive place back in its heyday. Um, it used to actually be like a local hangout for like a lot of people in Manchester and stuff. It was really, really cool. Um... And, uh, of course, as I said at the top of the show, by the time I got to know it, um, it had already been, like, long past its prime. Because um, uh, for a brief time, and I'm not going to get into the circumstances as to why, but I, uh, I actually lived in Manchester for a brief time in uh, 2010, 2000, yeah, it had to be 2010, yeah. Um, and... I remember one day I was out with somebody, uh, we were driving down Broad Street, and I saw something out of the corner of my eye, and it was a Bradley sign, and I was like, whoa, I had not seen, because Bradley's had shut down in 2001, um, and I remember going there all the time with my mom, and, you know, shopping there and everything, it was a cool place. Um, and so I saw the Bradley sign and I did a double take and then I looked back and I saw the building and I was like, oh, I got to go there and take some pictures. <laughs> so 
uh, back then, uh, I didn't have a phone or camera or anything. So I, I, I did it the old school way. I, I, I was Mr. Old School. Um, and, uh, I used to go to the local Rite Aid or CVS, and I used to pick up the little disposable cameras, uh, the the ones that like gave you like 24 or 27 shots uh, per roll of film, and then you had to bring it back to the pharmacy and have them uh, develop the photos for you and put it in, on a photo CD. And you're gonna, and the majority of the pics that you're gonna see are from those disposable cameras, and you're gonna tell which shots they are because they have that film grainy look. And back then, I wasn't really that great of a, of a photographer. Um, it's it's funny uh, taking photos of that plaza. You know, I would continuously do it throughout the the uh, the couple of years uh, that I knew about it, and I matured uh, somewhat as a photographer. I tried new angles and new filters and things like that. And uh, so, the first time I went there, I already felt like I was home, man. I I uh, my driver, uh, he he drove into the um parking lot you know i mean we were just driving down broad street and i saw the huge i mean that back then man back in the 80s and 90s road signs like that for like the stores and everything they were huge so you could see them like two miles away that's how huge this thing was um so anyway i saw the huge bradley's logo the old like god it had to be like 80s or 90s era you know, font styling. You would never see font, you know, a lettering style like that today for a department store. Nowadays, it's all new age and aerial and, like, thin. No, this was, like, bold arrows and, and stencil and really had that good old-timey feel, you know? Bradley's always had that old, old-timey old feel. I mean, whereas stores like Caldor updated their logo later on in the 90s and had it look more 90s-ish, Bradley's always had that blocky, like, old-style 70s uh, logo typeface thing going on. Um, and as soon as I saw that, you know, tears, you know, sort of started rolling down my eyes, man, because I really, really, really love bradley's and all those old stores and everything and um and, and i have a weird uh, sort of uh parallel conspiracy theory that uh, i'll get into at the end of the of uh, the program but for now i want to stick to you know the memories i have of you know just going to this place um i used to call the the dead manchester parkade uh which they uh, later on when it became abandoned and started to take on almost a life of its own as like a creepy old uh, strip mall. Um, they they coined the, the phrase the dark side of the parkade or the dark side of Broad Street. Um, and I, I really loved going there. I, I, I call the place like my sanctuary. It was my sanctuary because uh, the place where I was living in Manchester, um, I, again, I said I'm not going to get into it and I'm, and I'm not. But I'm just going to say this right now. It was a hellish experience. I hated living where I was living. The people were rude. The people were nasty. Um, and so whenever I went to this uh, Manchester Parkade, uh, even though it was dead, I couldn't go inside any of the buildings or anything. You know, I, I felt, weirdly enough, I felt like I was home. I felt like I was in another time. You know, I, I didn't, I, it was like, I, I escaped. You know, that that's what it was like for me when I walked around that whole parking lot and saw the buildings and everything and walked behind and everything. It felt like, you know, I had escaped to another time period, you know, and it felt good. It felt really cool, actually, to have that sort of a, a time-traveling uh, experience because that's what it was like for me, you know. I was going back in time to uh, a happier time in my life when, you know, I was a little kid and... You know, everything was going well, and all I had to worry about was, like, you know, homework and learning my multiplication tables and all that stuff. Um, and the the cool thing for me was the fact that the Bradley sign was still up on the building. Um, it wasn't like the one in Hartford, uh, which I also went to, uh, which I actually was able to get inside of. I was actually able to get inside there and take some pictures. Um, and I might post those in like a different link or something. Um, but 
I was like that one because the one in Hartford, the sign was torn down. Um, but, uh, this one, it was, this, it was still up. It was cracked beyond all belief. You know, birds had started to make their home in the sign. I mean, you know, it's like the sounds of the dead parkade for me were hearing these pigeons. I could s still like, hear the wind, the cars, and, and the pigeons, like, circling around the, the plaza. I could still hear that right now in my ears as I'm talking about it, and it's kind of cool. Um, and seeing all the birds and everything, and so walking around this, this dead plaza, you know, that, you know, the whole thing was, like, closed down by, like, 2001. So, um, again, this was, like, nearly a decade later than I'm walking around this thing. So, it really is, like, frozen in time, even though, it, you know, of course, looked, you know, decrepit. Um, but it was really, like, frozen in time. Like, it had been untouched pr vert practically since uh, the start of the decade. Um, and it was really, really cool. Um, and so I see the Bradley sign and, um, I, I, I did take pieces of the sign that had fallen on the ground, but because they were, uh, sharp plastic or plexiglass, I wasn't able to keep them. Uh, the people I was living with, uh, discarded them and said that, uh, I could use them as a weapon and which was ridiculous. Of course, I was never going to do that. Um, so sadly today I, I no longer have any remnants uh, of that parkade, except for the memories, uh, unfortunately, in the, in the photographs, many, many photographs, thank God that I was able to shoot while uh, the place was still up, because um, I'm going to get into this, um, the parkade was demolished, uh, sadly, uh, in uh, 2011 in 2012 and as far as i know there's still nothing there it's just barren land now it's like there aren't any buildings on it there's nothing being done with it it's just barren land and that's why it makes me all the more angry it's like okay so you tear this place down and six years later there's still nothing up okay so what, what, what this could have waited you know this this really should have waited couple more years for you to tear it down i mean you know i'm not like most people i don't like seeing history torn down even if it's you know not like american history or anything like retail history you know i'm a big retail history guy you know like it, this place was such a part of our childhoods and it was a part of you know culture in that time period like everybody said you know what, let's go to bradley's and get our christmas ornaments and our underwears and everything else and you know, it was really a big part of our, our lives, going to these stores, you know, like Bradley's and Caldor and Ames, and then, you know, the, the turn of the century comes, and it's like all these places are gone, and then, you know, they start tearing them down, and it's it's really just a sad sight to see and then i i'm reading through the articles and i'm seeing all these people rejoicing and it being and being excited and you know giving vindictive cheers over the demolition of these buildings and i'm like okay great so you're you're happy that history is being destroyed good for you uh and these are the very same people who uh you know are you know giving the biggest shit over Confederate soldier statues being torn down and all this. Okay, great. Um, you're a hypocrite. Uh, but moving on, I mean, I know these buildings were decrepit and they were a safety hazard, uh, but they were really only a safety hazard if you went in them. See, that's the thing that I have with the band of buildings. I mean, yeah, they could catch fire. And if, and if, and of course, if they caught fire, then of course, you know, do what you got to do. But, you know, they really weren't bothering anybody. Yeah, they didn't look pretty. Uh, but to be fair, um, that part of manchester and really manchester in general doesn't look that good anyway I mean, when i lived there broad street and everything else it, it was all really a dump uh, manchester is really a dumpy fucking city dude if you really think about it it's really horrible looking um it's like um i, I think a lot of you know hartford has seceded into manchester be because there's a lot of blight in manchester and shit and a lot of people you know not really savory people live in manchester unfortunately so it's it's not really the best city to live in um 
But again, I was like really, really upset to find out, you know, I mean, in 2011 that they were demolishing this property, you know, that was really, really special to me because this place was really a place where I could go to escape and just take pictures and really just be myself because the place where I was living in Manchester, and I guess I'll reveal where it was, you know, I have nothing to hide now. I mean, I've been out of that place for God, about probably about a good uh, eight years at this point. Um, it was, uh, the, the, uh, Manchester star, um, 89 nutmeg, the notorious 89 nutmeg, uh, residential home for troubled boys. Um, I'll, I'll put it to you, uh, mildly with that. Um, it wasn't that I was troubled. I was just put into a bad, a bad predicament. Um, but I was really like the only white guy in a home full of r racist, previously incarcerated African-American guys. So you can imagine what it was like for me, uh, nearly beaten to death every day and, um, scolded, harassed, racially attacked. Um, so that's why this Manchester parkade going to the Bradleys and seeing all these buildings and everything, that's why it meant so much to me to go there because I could escape from that terrible situation. I could just go there, take pictures and feel like I was at ease. And I was one with the world and everything. And it really made me feel really good to walk those grounds and, and see, all that stuff and really go back to a time period when I was my most happy, uh, which was the 2001, like well, late nineties, two thousands, uh, when I was really my most happy. Um, and it was a big expansive property too. I mean, you could like spend a good 15 or 20 minutes there just walking those grounds. Um, and looking at all the buildings and everything. And, uh, there was another building there that I believe, at one point housed a radio station, like a local radio station. And then, um, it was also, uh, at one point, uh, an indoor mall. It had like a bunch of different stores in it. And then that shut down and it became a Marshall's. Um, and then that shut down, became like a liquidation center or something. My, my, see my history on, on that whole property is bleak. Um, I know the Bradley's was, uh, before it was Bradley's was actually a King's department store. Um, and the stop and shop came later once Bradley's came in and Bradley's came in, I believe in or around 1982. Um, so that's, that's what I know. There was, um, an, a store called, I believe, uh, F and S. Um, I don't really know what that was, uh, because I, again, I never knew that place when it was in its prime and thriving. I would have loved to have gone there actually when it was thriving. Cause I bet it was a great place to just hang out and do like, <laughs> do like donuts on the road and shit like that. I mean, people would do that anyway when it became abandoned, but people, but like doing it back then and hanging out with your friends and going to the parkade, going to Bradley's, picking up some records and then going to stop and shop, get some booze and just having a good old damn good old time and shit. But that was great. Um, I could just imagine because I love the eighties, you know, I, even though I'm like 23 years old, I, I, I love the eighties. It's one of my favorite eras in, in history, you know, just from a pop culture and just overall feel. Um, and, and I try to incorporate in that into uh, my work as a television show host. I try to bring some of that back, um, at least from the aesthetic. And so that, that that's why, you know, when I found out this place was being demolished, it crushed the living daylights out of me because it was like, this was a place where I can go when I was really in a rough patch and it really did help me out. It really helped me out, man. I, I loved walking those grounds. It made me feel so good. You know, just, you know, I'm just remembering, you know, the memories of walking those grounds and it just made me feel so good, you know? I was brought to like a place in Nirvana when I went there, you know, and I think I was actually one of the last guys to, you know, really walk around because if I remember correctly, I, I, I got there in like 2010, 2009, and then they went tearing it down in 2011. And it really tore me up, man, because I really loved Bradley's and Caldor and Ames. And, and, and I guess now I'll get into like those little weird little parallel. Um, it's almost like the, a weird sort of like parallel to um, professional wrestling, you know, and how that was like in the early 2000s. 
No, nearly to thousands. You had ECW closed down. You had WCW closed down. And then pretty much the big hot commodity became the WWF, which is now the WWE. And I sort of see the same thing happen to the retail uh, landscape once you had Caldor uh, close up in 99, Bradley's in 01, and then Ames in 02. Um, that really changed the retail landscape. And then all we have now is Target, Walmart, Kmart's on its way out. Um, and it's really, really sad because you know what? Like ECW and WCW did for wrestling with um, Bradley's, Caldor, and Ames, plus Walmart and the other stores, but mostly like Caldor, Bradley's, and Ames, you really had more of a variety. You know, you had a variety of stores, you know, and a variety of items, a variety of prices, you know, and you could price things, you know. It was really a cool experience going there. And then, like in Caldor, you used to have the carousel in there, the merry-go-round. It was really, really cool. And you just don't get that today, man. That's why when those stores closed down, that was like an, the end of an era because those are some damn good stores to walk around in. I, I remember going to Ames and Bradley's and all that stuff. I mean... People think that, yeah, I was born in 95, so why, how, how would I remember this stuff? Well, I have a, actually a pretty good memory for this type of stuff, and these places did make an impression on me. Um, and, and it really does sadden me that they're gone, um, because the, the retail world needs stores like that to open up again, you know. And because here, here, here's my idea, here, here's, here's the thing with me, is that if you have a business... You know, and if you're the only business in town, it, not having any competition doesn't give you any purpose to improve your company or your product. And that's why we need like a WCW or an ECW in wrestling. And that's why we need like a Caldor, Bradley's and Ames in the retail market is because those stores helped Walmart and you know, say, hey, look at what these guys are doing. Maybe we should step up our game a little bit. Um... And now Walmart and stores like that have just grown stale. You know, I don't, I mean, I just don't have that same feeling that I had back then walking into a Walmart or or Target or, or Sears or whatever. I just don't have that same feel. It doesn't have the same vibe that it did back in the day whenever I used to go to Caldor or Bradley's or Ames, man. It just doesn't have that same vibe. And it's sad, you know. All these stores that we grew up with are gone, and I guess that's the reason why I collect so many, so much 80s ephemera is because I'm trying to hold on to an era that's like long gone. You know, someday, you know, it's almost like how I like stuff from the 1920s. You know, it's like that's an era that's long gone. Everybody from the 20s is dead and buried, and that's why I like the the, the films that came out around that time and some of the music that came out around that time is because. You know, that's like an era in history that we'll never see again. And the 80s is the same way. Someday the 80s will be just as distant as the 1920s. And that's a scary thought, but it's going to happen. Um, so that, that that's what I just wanted to come at you guys with and talk about, you know, my memories of walking the grounds of the Manchester Parkade and the, the happy memories that it gave me because... I, it was it was something that I needed, you know. I, it was a place that I really needed uh, back then, just to walk around and forget about my troubles and forget about the people giving me trout, you know, hard time and everything. And so it really helped me out a lot. It helped me out a lot. Well, I'm going on 22 minutes here. Uh, it's 12:26 a.m. on September 6, 2018. Uh, this has been uh, Gino Cuddy coming at you with um, another episode of uh, Cuddy's World. Um, I'm going to do like a mass uh, release of episodes soon because I just have so many backlogged uh, that I haven't yet put the video presentation together for um, that I really, really need to get out there. So I'm going to uh, have to work on that soon. Um, the computer that has, uh, I'm operating on a new, new work. Uh, computer that doesn't have Windows Movie Maker on it. Um, so when I get my old computer back, uh, hopefully they can repair it and send it back to me. Um, at that point, I'll uh, put 
put the episodes together and I'll put them up on the Entangled Web uh, podcast uh, channel on YouTube. Um, and speaking of the Entangled Web Podcast Network channel on YouTube, uh, thank you to everyone, uh, the all three subscribers that I have. Um, and thank you for all the views, the comments. I, I really do appreciate them. Um, and if you'd like to reach out to me, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, that's gcuddy.ew at gmail.com. That is G-C-U-D-D as in David Y. Uh, dot ew at gmail.com you can email me anything you know you could tell me your memories of uh, the manchester parkade um and uh, connect with me there um i also have a facebook page which you can follow um that's facebook.com slash official gino cuddy that is g-e-n-o-c-u-d-d-y um there you can see everything else that i do like my tv show that i have and everything else that i have um, my Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter, at official Gino C. Um, and, uh, the, the blog, of course, the blog that goes along with this podcast, which is cuddysworld.blogspot.com. Um, and, uh, I guess that's about it. Um, I have been uploading, I did upload some of these episodes to Mixcloud. I might do that with this as well. Um, so... So yeah, guys, um, it's 12.28 a.m. Um, I got to get running here. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, and uh, feel free, like in the comment section, you know, on the YouTube upload or email me or message me and tell me what was a place that really meant a lot to you when you were a kid that no longer exists. Like and, and, and give me, and tell me a story, man. Just just write me a nice story of of a place that really meant a lot to you as a kid. And uh, the the ones that I think are the best, I'll I'll read on 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 the on the podcast network here. I'll, I'll read them out um, if you'd like me to. Um, because I'm all about sharing stories, guys, and sharing memories, and that's that's what I like doing. Um, so so yeah, it's about twelve twenty nine, twelve thirty. Um, 25 minutes running. Um, hope you guys have a great night. And, uh, thanks for the memories, Manchester Parkade. You will be missed. Um, you are missed. Um, it's a shame they haven't done anything with that property in over six freaking years. But that's Manchester for you. Anyway, guys, peace out. I, uh, I almost forgot to add, uh, this was uh, actually a funny little side note about my many jaunts. Uh, to the parkade back in the day um, In the back there was a whole bunch of trash and debris um, And amongst the trash were all these old VHS videotapes <laughs> And and actually among them I found actually one of my favorite movies from my childhood back there uh, House Guest uh, Starring Sinbad and Phil Hartman and Kim Greist um, And uh, I took it back uh, to the home with me and lo and behold, all I had to do was clean it up a little bit, and actually it worked. It still worked. I don't know how long it had been back there, but it actually still freaking worked. I still have it, actually, to this day. Um, it's in a, uh, it's in my entertainment center, uh, in, in, in like a, a, a hideaway closet in my, in my entertainment center. I ought to pull it out and watch it again. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd add that little cool side note. Yeah, and I also found a cover, very sun-faded, cover for one of my favorite films as well, uh, First Kid, starring Sinbad. Uh, really, really funny, because I really loved Sinbad at the time, and it was really weird to see two Sinbad movies in the in the back of a store that I loved so much as a kid. You know, it was really like 90-ception. You know, going to the back of a Bradley store and, and finding two VHS movies of Sinbad Really, really cool. Just thought I'd add that. Hopefully, guys, you know, didn't just stop listening after I said peace out. But now I really will say peace out. So, peace out.